So there's some examples of what a 5D QS can do and how that workflow comes together. Um, the, the next thing I'd like to do is just give you a sense of how that affects contracting because we've talked about IPD and that sort of thing today um, and, and we'll also look at where those costs sit. Now the first thing is, is BIM execution plans. Um, I've read many, many, lots of them. I've got one that I was reading on the plane here, it's 339 pages. Um, much of it I've read before, a lot of other stuff that's new. Um, and it's a big deal, but when I look at it, I think it comes down to, I think it comes down to three things, and if a design team gets them set in their head, you start to get along the, along the way. Um, and, and an execution plan, needs to be revised. So as you get new characters come to the stage, um, you get a builder involved, it's time to relook at the execution plan and, and, and task may change. Um, but really, if you understand the process of what you're delivering, um, whether it's concept or whether you're working towards just design or bid, um, um, understand clearly what that deliverable is, understand what the behaviour is in terms of how information is going to be exchanged. So whether, as from a 5 DQS, if I'm just going to get information from people, or whether I'm going to be part of the cycle and whether information is going to round trip, um, and understanding how that occurs. And then the last one is, is really getting this level of development sorted on the, on the technology deliverable side. So not the technology itself, but clearly understanding what's being delivered. Um, and invariably, it's different for different design dis disciplines. So what happens in mechanical um, at bid stage might be very different to what is happening with structure um, at bid stage. But in terms of the contracts itself, so looking at my office in Brisbane, we've got 420 current projects. 85% of those are lump sum. It's never going to change to IPD in my lifetime. Right? So that's where, that's where our culture is. So if you want to apply this thing to the market at the moment, it needs to work in the lump sum environment. And the, re the way I look at that is basically encouraging what happened on South Bank with that subcontractor in a lump sum space, because that's what that was. So in the first instance, we've got designers, and they're basically developing up a four-tender model. It doesn't matter whether it's tendered on the model or whether there's 2D drawings or whatever. That, that four-tender information is handed to a contractor. And then we need to tell the contractor, don't start work. Take the time to understand what the model information is about for him to do his own clash detection. So while our designers have done the coordination and the clash they best can, the next phase is for the builder to do the clash. And he's going he's to identify issues and then pass them back to the, to, the, um, to the designers, then look at what they need to change, if anything, yada, yada, yada. If it generates variations, value them, agree them and move on. Um, this isn't very different to what we did when I started in construction. Um, we, hear, we heard that a lot today. Um, but there used to be a four tender set of documents that were issued. Design still went on while it was at tender, and then there was a four construction set. The four construction set was actually different to the four tender set. Today, we tend to issue a four tender set, and at construction, we just change the title block. Nothing changes other than it's now issued for construction. What I'm, what I'm looking at here is, is that it's actually the contractor that's giving the information back for the four construction set of, set of documents. Um, what's changed? Before, a builder could not get his head around all of the gazillion documents that we provide him. But with the search sets and things like that, if he's proficient with using things like Celebri and Navis and yada, 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 he can do these checks very, very quickly. If he starts to attach his 4D information to it and, and cost information to it, he gets a very strong understanding of what this building's about. So it's about forcing him to do this work to understand what the building is about. And he can bring his subcontractors along the way if he wants.